Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look, they done gave your girl a podcast, y'all. They done gave your girl a talk show. And by they, I mean Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. By they, I mean me. Because sometimes you can't wait for people to give you something. You just gotta go ahead and take that yourself, okay? So listen, welcome to the family. Welcome to the show. This is Pure Anointing, and I am your host, Ijenma Anene, also known as EJ, also known as Prayer Princess, also known as a faithful servant to Christ. And on this podcast, we are going to talk about all things faith, spirituality, and culture. So hold on to your seats. This is episode one of very, very many. It is October 1st, 2023. And it is Nigerian Independence Day, okay? What better day and way to kick off Pure Anointing than on Nigerian Independence Day? I know it is a day of celebration, uh, but we're gonna get a little deep today because there are a lot of things to discuss. I wanna focus on the topic of freedom, the topic of spiritual bondage, and also what we need to be doing moving forward to make sure that we are establishing our identity in Christ and that we are continuing to walk with him as his children, even in the culture of today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm not gonna lie, I don't have a script. I've got some notes, uh, but we're just gonna see where this conversation flows today. And I don't have that much time. I've got about 30 minutes in this studio. So we're gonna see what we can pump out for episode one in 30 minutes, but um, welcome. I hope that everybody is doing well. And before we get started, I just wanna pray us in. So Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time, this present time. We just wanna thank you. Whoever is watching this video, whether it's on Nigerian Independence Day or not, whenever time they're watching, from whatever time zone, from whatever continent, country, state, Father God, I pray that they are covered and protected in the name of Jesus. I pray that whatever we discuss today, they'll be able to receive it in a way that allows them to go forth and be fruitful and multiply in their life, Father God, because that was your word onto us. Be fruitful. And fruitful is not only in one area. We can be fruitful in so many areas, Lord. So I pray that your fruitfulness come upon us, come upon this growing family, and come upon whoever is watching this video and listening to this podcast on the other side of their device. In the name of Jesus, I pray that no harm shall come over us, Lord. We're going to get into a lot more praying as this series goes on, but Father God, I just want to bless your holy name that wherever this may lead, it is all for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I have prayed. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the show. So uh, Nigerian culture, and this is going to focus on Nigerian culture, not the show, but just this episode um, with it being Nigerian Independence Day, but it is something that can be translated to any culture, translated to any area of life when it comes to spirituality. So I'm Ibo. And um, something that people will commonly say about Igbo people is that they will succeed by any means necessary. When you hear about Igbo people, you'll hear that a lot of them go on to these wonderful professions like being a doctor, being a lawyer, being an engineer, and it makes their family proud. And you know, they make a lot of money and they have wealth, they have status. These are some of the things that are commonly known as important and signs of, you know, respect in Igbo culture. If you are a Nigerian American child like me, then you know that growing up, there weren't really a lot of options for uh, careers or for what we were able to do. It was pretty much you go to school, you get your bachelor's, you get your master's, and then you get your doctorate or some type of terminal degree. So um, not that much flexibility in terms of creativity and whatnot. Um, but all for the purpose of establishing something, right? Our parents, a lot of them have made a lot of sacrifices. They came here to give us more opportunities. So, you know, you don't want to see an op something like that go to waste in terms of, you know, what they typically thought is a respectable career or something that they would be able to make their child have a comfortable life and have a comfortable life for their children and their grandchildren and so on and so forth. So um, 
yeah, I just wanted to kind of touch on just some of the like Igbo cultural aspects and also like Nigerian cultural aspects as well when it comes to family, career, respect, success, and that kind of thing. Um, and I was watching a video by Pastor Stephanie Ike Okafor and um, she has this whole series about African, not African spirituality, although this one episode was about African spirituality, but about uh, spiritual warfare. And that is an area that I am really having some experience with lately, um, especially since like giving my life to Christ and following Jesus and spreading his word and spreading the gospel and you know, really focusing my life around that I am a faithful disciple, faithful servant of Christ. Um, spiritual warfare is something that I think deserves a lot of attention for the reason that it is possible to overcome it. And I think that, um, you know, in American culture and Black American culture, we talk a lot about generational curses, um, generational bondage, which I think is very real. But I also think what's more important than identifying, you know, places in your bloodline that have kind of caused things to pass down through generation, what's more important than identifying those is identifying ways to break those things and letting people know that it is very possible to break those chains. Um, so when it comes to African spirituality and some of those cultural beliefs that, you know, we hold, some of those things, whether we believe it or not, whether they are, you know, brought to us for a good purpose or not, whether it's empowerment or wealth or status, seemingly good things, a lot of those things can actually keep us in bondage. So again, the title of today's episode is Independence Day, Finding Freedom from Bondage finding freedom from bondage. So I think that, um, actually one second, I gotta grab my iPad. I should have had it over here, but I didn't, so let me go grab it. Oh, knocking stuff over, okay. So, um, freedom. Just to find the definition of freedom, um, Merriam-Webster says the quality or state of being free, such as the absence of necessity, coercion, or constraint in choice or action. That's the first definition. Or liberation from slavery or restraint or from the power of another, independence. So with it being Nigerian Independence Day, we know that we did receive our independence from Britain, from Great Britain, on October 1st, 1961, was the day that we became our own country um, without being ruled by another nation. Now, we could get into history on, you know, what Great Britain did and is still doing to the country of Nigeria, but I think let's just focus on the topic of freedom and what it really means to be free, and are we really walking in freedom now? So many of us know that Nigeria has had uh, corruption in the past when it comes to the government and its citizens and just everything that we would kind of expect for a country to provide. Um, and it's not like we don't have the resources, it's just misappropriation of funds, right? So when we see that happening, there's always a deeper root to it. And that's something that we're gonna talk about a lot is we see things happening in the spiritual, right? Um, I mean, sorry, we see things happening in the physical world. So um, governments not taking care of their citizens, a lot of greed, a lot of coercion, a lot of misappropriated funds. We see things happening in the physical day in and day out. We see homelessness, we see poverty, we see all of these things. But there is going to be a spiritual attachment to those things. So why? It's like deep, digging a little bit deeper to uncover why certain things are happening. So one area of bondage that the Lord freed me from personally that I believe um, is not talked about enough in the sense of modern times is idolatry. So simply put in like very simple terms, idolatry is loving anything more than you love God, loving anything more than you love your creator, whether it is and putting a, your emphasis on that chasing after that, like 
really like that is the thing that is sustaining you is your attraction to this thing your commitment to this thing your love for this thing whatever it is that this thing is so in um in culture like culturally idols have been like figures that have been made in the image of a man or in the image of whatever the case may be they may be like statues or made out of wood um something that people realistically that it is evil in the sense that you, they pray to the devil with it and they encourage and accept demons to talk through that thing or to to grant them their wishes kind of like uh juju witch doctors being high priestess priestesses all that kind of stuff that is obviously not praying to god not worshiping god those things are praying to the devil instead if it's not god it's evil if it's not god it's the devil plain and simple now within the devil there are definitely different areas there's new age practices there is uh witchcraft there's a lot of things underneath that realm of evil and that realm of the devil but if it's not god it's the devil plain and simple so yes a lot of our ancestors we're practicing devil worshiping um, by worshiping idols, by worshiping inanimate objects that they have invited spirits to speak through, by worshiping spirits that are from the water, uh, Oshun, that kind of thing, which is something that is kind of made more common and acceptable in modern day culture, but that is still evil. If it's not God, it's, an, it's a spirit that is not of God, okay? So why I'm saying this is because um, there are things that can have us in bondage that we don't necessarily consider as bondage, like money and wealth, for example. Now, that is something that we have always been taught as Africans to strive for, as Black Americans to strive for. It's something that keeps us in bondage. We are just out here grinding, hustling, trying to get to the bag. And that is where our mental focus is. That's where our energy is focused on. They say, as a man thinks, so he is. Whatever you are giving all of your energy and time to is controlling you. For something to be controlling you, that means that you are in bondage. Now, you may think that it is your decision to get to the bag, to do all of this, to do all of that, but who is really telling you that that is important? Who is telling you that that is what you should be devoting your entire life and your time to is getting a check, making some paper, getting the bag. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, yes, money can very easily become an idol. Wealth can very easily become an idol when that is where your main focus lies. Wherever your main focus is outside of God, outside of Jesus, that is an idol in your life. So I definitely encourage you to really be introspective and look at your life and say, what am I devoting most of my time to? Is it going out? Is it alcohol? Is it, is it my business? Is it my job? All of those things can very easily become an idol when we are doing it without Christ. So um, how do we get free from bondage? So identifying those areas, whether it's in our bloodline, whether it's generational, or whether it's just what we are devoting all of our time to today that has us in chains, is really to repent. That's going to be the first step to putting things down. It's going to be the first step to turning things around and to beginning to walk with God. Because let me tell you something, as Black people, as African people, people as people with African ancestry and heritage, God chose us. He chose us. Of course, we are all his children, but we have a divine nature like everybody does. There's a reason why Black people are disenfranchised today. There is a reason why we are the subject of so many attacks. And yes, there are just evil humans out there that are racist and that don't even understand the reason why they're doing the things that they do because of ideologies, because of their mindsets. But there's also more. There's more to that. There's more to dissect there of why are we so oppressed? Why is our 
continent? Why is our nation that has all of these natural resources, why are we not even able to keep the lights on in our citizens' homes? There's a lot, and it's not just any one reason, but I think, truly believe that we are so far from God, we're so far from our creator, we need to get back to him. We need to pull ourselves back to him. We need to reach out to him. We need to say, Father God, please forgive me for all the times that I put my career above you. Forgive me for all the times that I put money above you. Forgive me for all the times that I put my relationship with a girlfriend or boyfriend or seeking that type of physical intimacy and connection above you. Um, repentance is just turning away from your sins. That's really all it is. And sin is simply to fall short and to miss the mark of what God has for us. And I really want to touch on the point that, you know, we can have success and we can have things by our own power, right? But whatever we have is never, ever, ever, ever going to amount to what God has for us. And we won't be able to see what God has for us unless we reach out to him, unless we ask him, Father God, show me what I should be doing with my life. Show me where I need to be focusing my attention, Lord God. Show me how I can seek you more in this thing. Show me how I can seek you more in my business. Show me how I can incorporate the word of God into everything that I'm doing. It's so important that we turn away from what we've been led to believe is important, what we've been led to believe is the only thing that we need in life is money, is a wife or a husband or, or a relationship. There are so many things that we idolize in American culture and African culture. We idolize these things that don't even have God attached to them or that should have God attached to them. We idolize relationships based on money and based on what people can do for you instead of, uh, instead of focusing on living in a godly way, instead of looking for a partner in a godly way. We're out here messing with other people's husbands and wives without any type of remorse or without fear of any repercussions like there's so many so much stuff that I want to dive into on this podcast and on this journey but today as a main takeaway I just want to pose the question of what does freedom really mean and what does freedom really look like for me, we are talking about money quite a bit. I believed that freedom was being able to go wherever I wanted and buy whatever I wanted at the drop of a dime. Now I'm realizing that true freedom is not caring so much about material things. Does that mean that we don't need material things or that God doesn't want us to have wealth? Absolutely not. I know that I have full wealth and abundance and resource and provision in the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's me submitting those wants, submitting those desires and those cares to the Lord so that he can fight those battles for me, so that he can give me everything that I am seeking. <laughs> so it's really important to submit and surrender those areas of our life to God because sure we could achieve certain things on our own but ultimately he is the one that can guide us to achieve everything that he has in store for us because our idea of success and God's idea of success for us totally different things and just because you can achieve certain things on your own does not mean that you don't need God because he is the one that is going to guide you to the pinnacle of what you're meant to achieve in your life. So again, posing the question, what is freedom? Freedom from bondage. What is keeping you in bondage in your life that you have become a slave to? The Bible says we should be slaves to righteousness. We should be slaves to wanting to live for Jesus, walk with Jesus. Um, so yeah, take time to dissect what freedom means to you what's keeping you in bondage, and what the idols are in your life. And we are going to come back um, on week two, talk about some of those things. I can go a little bit deeper into the idols that I had to renounce and revoke access <laughs> and cast down in my life, and just how things have changed so much for me since I've made those decisions to only seek God above everything. So 
again, welcome to Pure Anointing, the podcast. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I was kind of talking kind of fast. Don't worry. I'm going to get my pace down. I'm going to get my tone down. I'm going to get everything down and make this an enjoyable experience for everybody who takes the time to listen. Not only enjoyable, but informative, most of all informative. And again, our goal is really just to seek to bring you back home. We miss you. God misses you. He wants to wrap his arms around you. He wants to hear you. He wants you to hear him call you son or daughter because that's what we all are. We are God's sons and daughters and there's nothing that we can do or achieve in victory without him. He is the one who gives us the victory and we in turn give him the praise, the honor, the adoration, and the glory. So with that, Lord, thank you so much for this time that you've given us today. Thank you for your children. Thank you for your child who took the time to listen today. And I pray that as they go on about their week or about their day, that they listen to what you have to say to them. And they ask you these questions and they ask you, Holy Spirit, what is what has been keeping me in bondage? What is something that I've been devoting myself to without even realizing the harm that it's causing me? So um, I don't even know how to end this. I just wish I could keep talking because I have so much of a story to tell about my own personal journey and my experience. Um, but we'll save it for next week. And I think that's it. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you later. Bye.